Theo's video where he speaks a little bit about it. And we're going to get an idea on what Theo's uh, point of view is regarding the whole thing, right? So let's see Theo. Um, oh, I thought he did that thing, that little cultish thing where he said, like, this man is defrauded your podcast. Okay, he said our. Cool, okay. Um, you could have said my, but again, you know, there's always that kind of wording to make it seem like everybody's involved and they're not really. But anyway, let's 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 click it here and see what he's saying about Colin Thompson. Imagine if Rogan has him on to explain his side, Colin Thompson. That'd be hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> In the legal space, I want to talk about uh, something that has been tough for. It's. I want to talk about something. Um, we. Our podcast was defrauded. We were stolen from. Um, we we were taken advantage of. A lot of ways to say it. Uh, the company that can, can you imagine how much? I'm sorry. Can you imagine how much money Theo got robbed of? Right. He might be one of the most successful podcasts on Cast Media or out of that group of people. Can you imagine how much money they've taken from Theo? Oh. And again, I like Theo. He seems like a cool guy fun dude you know love his pod love everything that he does but he doesn't seem like the most business savvy guy which is a good thing because that's why he's funny he's not out here worrying about you know ped you know peddling merch too much or monetizing his fan base at every turn he does do it but you know he's basically trying to make the funnest show possible and then hope that you guys as fans and viewers kind of support along the way so because of that you kind of have to give up the business acumen so oh can you imagine how much money that colin thompson and all those guys stole from him brutal bro did it is cast media and the man that did it is colin thompson Jesus. and i'm gonna put his picture in here wow um, and uh it's i don't know exactly how to say this i'm gonna do my best um I, we're part of a larger group of podcasts that were <laughs> uh mm. stolen from this all could have been remedied if they just opened up their own gmail accounts and just did their own podcast deals they're already famous they get loads of inbound requests people you know falling over themselves to flip and get their prod products or services slapped in on the fucking pod many little ad breaks they could have done it easily but because they're all work shy they're all inherently lazy they don't want to do it but they then want to sit on their podcast and pontificate about how hard they work you know, and then they get fucking slammed by a master fucking crook, a master fraudster. That's what happens when you don't want to do part of the work. You give up the ownership and people take the piss out of you. Big up Austin Casey. The bigger question is which celeb got a TRX that made Bopper want a TRX? Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Austin Casey. Appreciate it. My theory on a TRX thing is this. My theory is that he thinks this is going to be a new... Because again, let me let me know if I'm if I'm off base here in the chat. Are there people out there that use the, these trucks, these pickup trucks, as like makeshift or like an alternative to having an SUV? Because in our, in my country, um, people drive like if you've got money, the car to drive around to like have if you have a family. Oh, I need a car that so the family feels safe and I can drive my kids to school. Is this? Mm. It's odd to say this, but this is the one. All the people that have like money, they buy Range Rover Sports in the UK and they use them as like fucking baby mobiles, essentially. They don't use them to go off road. They don't do anything that they're intended to do. They just drive really fast around their local area. They do the school run. They go on motorways. They use them to pack all their shopping in the back or when they want to go do the Ikea run. So I wonder if in the States you guys have a thing where people use their pickup trucks as a alternative to having an SUV. Is that a thing? Because I think that's what he's doing. It Because he's, his family's growing and he's has this new baby, he's going to justify having that car because it's for the kids. What do you guys think here? It's a full-size four truck. Yeah, okay. It's a full-size four-door luxury truck. Like any country, really, we can, exactly, we can run exactly, yeah, exactly. There we go. Okay, cool. So it's, it is possible. That's what I think he's bought the car for. So I don't think he even saw anyone, Austin. I think most likely he just feels like that car is the one that's going to help his family. Does that make sense? It's a bit weird, isn't it? But I think that's what he's going for. It's a family mobile thing. 
but you know I could be wrong but I think that's what he's basically going for um let's let's continue with the fear stuff we were part the in, in total I've just between talking with folks there's up to four million dollars that I know of that people were taking advantage of uh we're in the six figures I know of podcasts that are in the seven figures um holy shit Fio is saying there's more than four million dollars that hasn't been paid out to these podcasters mama mia honestly i'm sorry bruv if you're a podcaster and you got frauded from cast media and you haven't got your money yet but then you go and sign up with another podcast you know what you call it advertising network conglomerate thing you're a fucking idiot because i have a feeling that all of these podcast network brand things are all scamming you in some way because you give them you basically trust them with that side of business because you're too late to do it on your own and they get all the inbound requests they the ones that get the funds through their accounts and then they pay you from that which opens up the possibility for them to scam so i have a feeling all of these companies scam to an extent this just colin thompson guy just did too much he obviously went all the way and got greedy but if you go and re-sign to another podcast network thing you're a fucking idiot you really are because you're gonna have the same issue come up again and again there's too much money on the line for you to be trusting your ads to just any tom dick and harry wow bro four million no offense and stuff but i'd be ramming my car into his fucking into the gates of his house if i was owed four million I'd be turning up at his at his fucking kid's school. I'm not even joking. I don't play when it comes to that stuff. I'd turn up to his kid's school, bro. I'd catch him on a school run. Legit. I'd catch him on a school run and introduce myself and say hi and ask for directions and shit. That's what I would do. And ask him if he's got a lighter. Four million. You see what I would do for fucking 500 pounds. <laughs> four million fuck and colin thompson that's his name i want to say his name so you know it uh people get taken advantage of a lot in business and and and, and businesses use tactics and stuff to hide to hide themselves and uh you know they'll use bankruptcy or the threat of this or that and and um and and he may get my money that's okay you know I, i'm fortunate that i can still have touring and that i uh can take care of myself Jeez. But you fuck with the wrong rat, Colin. I'll tell you that, brother. And uh, and I'll just tell you guys what happened. Um, yes, we had a deal with this company, right? And and it was started off good, and then it started to get where we were getting less of our payments. And we were reading the ads. We do the ads, you know. We read them out. Hello, everyone. What up, as? We need a Balenci fund goal because every live I catch, I will be donating until the unboxing. And watch the unboxing while eating chins tacos from a can. <laughs> Thank you, Richie. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna set one up. They're coming soon. They're coming soon. Than you think, but big up, Richie. I appreciate the ten dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna do them. Um, please don't order. Please don't make tacos from a can. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna have the thought of you munching on menudo, um, stale tortilla fucking bread tacos no please don't do that order yourself a nice you know t a nice fucking box of tacos or go to a, your local mexican joy and just watch me off the phone and eat them over there don't don't do those yeah oh my god every time i think of chins tacos i want to throw up in my mouth like i can't believe this guy lives like this imagine living in la but choosing to make tacos like that at home for yourself think about that guys imagine living in la but choosing to make tacos the way Chin makes tacos at home for yourself. You live in LA. You can literally door dash yourself some of the best tacos ever. I'm assuming you guys have delivery services that we do. Every little fucking hole in wall restaurant usually has an option to order from online because it's an easy money earner. So you could legitimately order from a really good place and get tacos delivered to your door yes will they be you know a little bit mushed up and shit of course but they'll taste delightful at least somebody that knows that the cook has made them for you but he chooses to fucking sit at home in la 
where he's surrounded by some of the best Mexican food in the fucking world. Some people even go as far as saying you can get better Mexican food in LA than you can get in actual fucking Mexico. But he chooses to fucking make it out of a tin can. And, and you guys support some of them and thank you. Um, and then it got to be where we were getting paid less of the payment we were owed. <laughs> <laughs> and they sell all the ads a year in advance. So you're kind of stuck into the year, right? And the advertisers were paying Colin Thompson and Cast Media, and they weren't paying us. They would pay us a little bit, and they had a reason why. And Ah, this explains why Brennan's also survived for so long. He's like a year behind. So whatever you're seeing now, the ads, you know, he's not going to, he's, he's going to get ads depending on what his level is, but the level that he is now, he's still making money from the previous year's views, which may maybe a bit higher. It's a fucking dodgy game, isn't it? It's a dodgy game. So and one of the craziest parts was like, there was like, we kept asking, you know, Hey, we have to get paid, man. We have to, and we weren't getting paid. And so finally I was able to make a new deal um, and just cut ties completely. I made sure that everything, you know, they breached our contract. And so I was able to cut ties. And then they come along, Colin Thompson comes along and he joins, there's a new company that has a stock that's going live soon, right? Or it's coming out or something. This company called Podcast One or Live One, right? I, he, they, they get me on a call uh, with, I think the guy's name, Rob Ellen. Yeah, that's the guy's name, Rob Ellen. Um, and his brother is Doug Ellen, who's like a screenwriter, and I think he did. His brother was pretty successful. Let's pray Big Alien gets his 15K. Again, I don't like the guy, but yeah, he needs his money. I feel a little bit bad for him, though, because Brendan's out here buying Ford pickup trucks. He could afford to give me 15K by now out of his own pocket. But he's probably told BGO, I'm going to give you the money once everything goes through because Brendan's waiting on a big, big payday. Because I, I kind of believe Brendan about the Tiger Fick thing. I think he is trying to sell it actively because it didn't work out, basically. He, he would never admit that. Brendan would never admit it didn't work out. But he's going to sell Tiger Fick. And someone's going to take it, take it over. Like someone said to me in the chat or in my comments that, you know, um, setting up a whiskey brand or a liquor brand now is really difficult for whatever reason. So people are preferring to buy the rights or the leftover barrels of companies that aren't maybe doing as well and then rebranding them or, you know, messing about with the fucking recipe. So I can see a scenario where Brendan has told BGO, hey, wait, you know, I know you've got this lawsuit there for unpaid wages, but I promise I'll get you your money because he has the potential Tiger Fig sale coming. He has whatever he's owed from Podcast One coming. And then he has whatever new deal he has coming in podcast terms that's going to give him some money too. So there's a lot of things coming, you know, no, 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 uh, you know, no pun intended. He's coming everywhere. And, um, I think that's the biggest worry for him because in my opinion, when people promise things that they don't have to give you, it's usually an indication they're never going to give it to you because I want my thing immediately. I don't want to wait for you to get your deals through. No, you give me my money and then you make up the difference from the money that you're getting from the stuff that you're waiting on. Making people wait for your deals, I think it's a little bit scummy and it's kind of screams of another scam. Like, oh, withdraw your complaint, withdraw your lawsuit, and I'll pay you. No, no, no. Pay me first, then I'll withdraw it. Then when you pay me, I don't withdraw it. You know what I mean? That kind of game. But I think BGO will get his money eventually, but he'll only get it when Brendan get his or when he's comfortable to give it. Because Brendan's spending money. He bought himself a new truck. He refurbished the studio. Big up Austin Casey. Doug Allen wrote Entourage series. I think. Oh, sick. Fucking hell. <sighs> this, this Colin Thompson guy is scumming over some big people, isn't it? <laughs> and again, maybe I'm, I'm too heartless with this shit. 
But I'm sorry, man. I have to laugh. These guys act like they're like prime, super, you know, hero business people because they have a podcast that's, that's successful. Most of these guys are only successful because of the rub they get from Rogan. They have no real handle on the business. They are, you know, they're not even at all curious about learning. Right. And then someone comes along with a ready made plug in easy plug in and play method for you to you know extract as much money you can from your podcast you're not a bit suspicious i don't know about you guys but i'll be if it was me i would be a bit suspicious if somebody came along and said i'll handle all your podcast deals and i'll give you maximum payouts i'd be a bit suspicious because i know i can do it on my own why do i need you guys to do it for me it's extra work it's going to make me have to maybe like check emails all the time and maybe carve out a day in a week where i answer everything but I'd be a bit suspicious if a company said they can just handle all that stuff for me. My kind of antennas will kind of go up. These guys, it didn't because they would rather spend time banging fucking waitresses in comedy clubs in their fucking toilets and shit and telling shitty jokes than they would spend on their actual business. But hey, it's not my business, innit? Big up Austin Casey, I appreciate you, bro. But they get me on a call with this guy, Rob Ellen, right? And, and they tell me... Um, they tell me that if you come over to our new network, over to this new network, Podcast One, that we'll pay you in some of what you're owed in stock, right? But the stock hasn't gone public. So they're trying to, it, it felt like to me, A scam. they're trying to leverage our podcast mm -hmm. and other podcasts to then make their stock do well. Mm -hmm. Smart. Um, yeah. And then if that happens, then we'll get a share of our money, right? Like Exactly. But in my experience, all of that stuff is just empty promises. If somebody can scam you now in totality, all of you guys, to the point of five million and more, I'm sorry, but I don't trust you to give me this money that you're going to get on this potential sale. Why? Because when the sale comes through, you could easily say to me, I'll give you half now. I won't give you the full. I'll give you a quarter. I'll pay you in installments. There's always going to be something. If somebody can scam you in totality for 4 million, what what makes you believe they're going to pay you the 4 million back plus interest in all in one? They'll never do that. They're going to scam you again. So if it was me, I'm just cutting ties and I'm hiring, you know, what's your thing? I'm hiring um I'm hiring lawyers and shit to just chase this money on the back on the background for me. But I'm continuing with my life. I'm not engaging with this. Oh, I'm promising you. I'm promising you this stuff. Like it's a waste of time. If this guy's a scumbag and a scammer like this now, he's gonna be forever a scumbag. Exactly seven thirty. Fool me once. Like come on, bro. It just the whole thing to me felt really uh, seedy. And the worst part to me was, I said, well, what about Colin Thompson? I said, that guy's a crook. Mm. And they said he's going to be, um, he'll be, they said we felt like he's done a good job and that he would be part of the team still. Jesus Christ. So how, that's just. How does that make any sense? Why does Podcast One want to go into partnership with a guy that scammed everybody? I, do, I, don't, I, anyway, I can't work out what happened then. Colin Leach has Cast Media. Cast Media isn't doing well because maybe his own negligence or being too greedy. They have to declare bankruptcy. Big up, Richie. I appreciate you, bro. Trust is out the window. You owe me four milli. Another the donation to Balenci Fund. <laughs> He's so stupid. I saw that end bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Big up, big up, big up. You owe me four milli. Imagine owing somebody four million and then selling them, trust me, bro. Imagine owing somebody four million and then saying, trust me, bro. <laughs> Can you imagine? You owe somebody four million and you say, trust me, bro. Sorry, what? Trust you. Um, I'm trying to figure out how did Colin Leach put himself in a position to have a company buy his and then go on IPO. Because that's what it feels like, right? It feels like Podcast One's already there and then they absorbed his company and they're now going public. 
or maybe he owns or no or, or did I mistake it does Colin Leach own shares in podcast one and now they're going public he's going to make money from the sale is that what they mean or did podcast one buy cast media and now that they're going public so anyway whatever it says I think personally if you've got a company and you're offering out shares or you're selling them isn't there some sort of like due diligence like how about if it's like some terrorist leader wants to buy stock in your company are you obligated to sell it to them <laughs> like what is that how it works in business as long as you got the money you can buy a share of somebody's company if it's available to sell is that how it works i'm assuming it doesn't it? i'm don't even know why i'm why i'm asking this question if you've got money and somebody's got a business they they they, they will turn the blind eye if your business is going to allow them to kind of keep on functioning fucking hell bro because this this really does hurt actually you know what this actually might fuck up brendan's deal because brendan obviously signed up to podcast one he's happy with this new arrangement because he just is dumb as bricks and wants his money to buy his truck and to buy his wife like balenciaga bags or birkins and shit so he signed up to it could it be argued that theo is unint unintentionally fucking up brendan's potential deal because this might hurt the stock price, no? This might hurt the fucking IPO. Because he's essentially putting all this business out there that wasn't known. And plus he's the most well-known person that's kind of come out so far. This might hurt the deal, no? So isn't Theo kind of negatively affecting Brendan? <laughs> so imagine Brendan gave Theo a phone call. It's like, boy, chill out, man. Stop talking about Colin. And he owes him money too. But he believed the lies. I know some of this is a lot of insider baseball, man, but to me, it was just fucking just... <laughs> the cartel's own thick boy. <laughs> That's why he called it Gringo Pappy, isn't it? <laughs> hey. Felt real dirty, and it felt like um, just no... Queso Moses, Colin muscled his way up with a promise to leverage people like Papa to pump up the stock. So he effectively is doing like... What's that word? Is it is it pump is it pump and dump? What's that word when you like you talk up something and the hopes people invest into it? That is pumping, right? Pumping the stock. You talk about something before, you hype it up in in, in you know, indirectly, and then people get excited for it because they, they think there's gonna be a big payday and then that payday never comes through or it comes through for you and you just ride up into the sunset. <sighs> Yo, this bit again. These fucking guys, I don't have any sympathy for them because they're getting scammed over fundamentally not being bothered to sit on their fucking Gmails and respond to inbound emails requesting that they have ads. I'm a nobody. I get like 2,000, 3,000 streams sometimes on my live streams here and there, a couple hundred views on my videos. And I have people reaching out to my email wanting to, I don't know, advertise some shitty necklace or some shit, right? I, I ignore most of it. But I'm sure if you're those type of dudes, you have people in your Instagram DMs, your Twitter everywhere. Big up Austin Casey. Theo should ask Dana White for help with this. I bet Dana would help just to Fouquet Brenda over low. <laughs> yeah, he probably would. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Dana reached out to Theo privately. Dana, like... I don't know as much as I know people are trying to tell me that Dana isn't thinking about Brendan Dana's so petty I don't like the guy I think the way he runs the UFC is awful but he's also hilariously petty like he does not forget like once you cross him you're dead there's no coming back I can't think of many people who've crossed Dana who've come back into his good graces I can't think of many you know but not like cross them like a little argument. I mean, like they've had like back and forth, like how Dana likes to have. There's not many. Like once you once you cross him, it's over. So I could see a scenario where he might have reached out to fucking Theo directly and said, "Hey, let me put you in touch with some guys who got some deals and stuff." And da 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 do. But Jesus Christ, bro, what a scary situation! Again, I don't have any sympathy for them because if they just took some time out of their day to answer some of those inbound requests for ads for sponsorship they'd be fine they'd be making way more money than signing up with cast anyway it's all coming direct it'll take a bit more time a bit more effort and work you could easily employ somebody to just sort out those fucking emails 
but they'd rather not. They'd rather act like they're independent, they're doing all their own when they've got help, and then the help is then scamming them. Respect for podcasting, no respect for the work that we had done. Um, you know, to get paid by the advertisers and then not pay us. And then uh, for Colin to lead us in this direction to say, well, if you join this other group before their stock goes out, that uh, that then we'll pay you in some of the stock. But part of that would be based on if we're there for it to do well. I don't, I don't know, man, but I know what it feels like to be taken advantage of. Uh, and I wouldn't do that to these people. I wouldn't do that to Colin Thompson. I wouldn't do that to Cast Media. And um, and so I say this just because I don't want this guy taking advantage of anybody else. A lot of times in business practices, especially in like um, entertainment stuff, a lot of people are able to snake away and they're able to slip through and use tactics. Yeah, because everybody's, all of you guys are afraid to admit when you're damn bad. They all have incredibly big egos. And they're super afraid of the perception of how they are to be shattered. They don't want anyone to know when they're down bad. They don't want anyone to know when they're struggling, when they're, you know, in a bad space, in a bad place. They don't want you to know. They pretend like they're always good, like they're the richest, most successfulest, most busiest, most booked comedian in the world. When really they're struggling like just you and I. And then when it all goes wrong and it needs some help, here they are crying on camera and shit. And much as I like Theo and stuff a lot, come on, man. Like a lot of this is just their own, you know, their inability to just like be chill and real and just address things normally has got them into this situation. Honestly, this guy's a scammer. He's obviously a piece of shit, but they also made it super hard. They, sorry, they made it super easy for him. They have no idea on the money that is coming in. They don't know when they get paid. They're okay with missing payments. They and they they let it go on for fucking ages before they sound the alarm. Like they, you know, as much as this Colin Leach is a piece of shit, they also enabled it by turning a blind eye for a long time and pretending like everything was good, pretending they're Billy they're Billy Big Balls. Like this Colin, how how did he how did he manage to look, to clock up four million plus in scam money? Come on, bro, they let this go on for too long. Come on. Mixing uh, shell games and bullshit. Um, They're quick to block you on Instagram if you say something snarky or you make a joke that they don't like. But then when this guy is scamming them and taking money out of their pockets, you know, damaging the post, you know, harming their the security of their family, of their own futures, taking money out and basically food out their kids' mouths and shit, they have nothing to say. But if you make a bit of a you know a bit of a questionable joke on their instagram you poke fun at them they block you instantly so they see your comments but they can't check emails but you fucked with the wrong rat homie i have a voice and a lot of other people are forced into these bad deals because they don't they're afraid to speak up they're afraid to speak up man and uh that's not what our show is about and um yeah i just want you guys to know that this is the man we put his picture. Oh yeah, Austin Casey. I know. I know the 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 artists don't like to deal with um, business acts, business. They want to be business type. Sorry, I know what you said there. Artists, comedians don't like to deal with business aspects of things. They want a business type person to handle it. Get one then. Don't hire a company. Get somebody who you pay, who's financially incentivized through a salary or through a percentage to get that money. Get somebody to just sit on the, honestly, I'm telling you guys, I swear on my life, I wouldn't lie. I know what it's like behind the scenes. It's not that difficult. If you're as famous as those guys are, you are honestly getting 80% inbound requests for advertising. I swear you are. You're not doing any cold emails. You're not, you're not writing an email pitching yourself to fucking liquid death. Liquid Death see your numbers. They see that you're involved with the Jerry Extender universe. And they're like, you know what? Let's get you, let, let's get, let's um, sort out some tens for you as well. Because they want to be associated with you because you're part of that whole cool community comedy podcast scene thing. So Liquid Death will reach out to you. They'll say, hey, we want to give you money. We think you're cool. We think you're fun. We think you've got good numbers. We want to put our product on your fucking show. All you have to do is take half an hour out of your day one hour out of your day or hire somebody to just sit on your fucking gmail inbox to sit on your dms and just sift through all the fucking inbound business requests 
and then whatever is serious they bring it to your attention you figure out percentages you get the deal done the money gets wired to your account the person you hire takes their money or the or maybe you pay them directly it's not hard to do but the thing that these guys do the colin leach and cast media the genius thing that they do they make it seem like magic you don't even do anything you just probably give them their your rss feed you maybe give them the back end to your libsyn or to your whatever platform you use to host your what your thing you give them your 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 account number your sort code routing number whatever it may be and they just send you money every month that's a genius they just they just take all of the stress away from you but taking that stress away from you is also a prime opportunity to scam you because you're not paying attention you're not paying attention you know what i mean and i think personally they could make way more money doing it on their own and it removes the risk of getting scammed so as bad as this colin leach guy is the whole comedy scene essentially enabled him because they all want don't they all want to be artists they all want to be you know they all want to do all the cool stuff they don't want to do the business it's too much it's too hard work it's a headache all right now what's a headache now chasing four mil or maybe answering a few emails what actually gives you a headache what actually makes you go gray what actually keeps you up at night chasing four million or answering a few emails I drop on a thing on the youtube and the amount of money that i from from other people podcasters they've said is over four million dollars Jesus um, Christ! and um yeah it's just the shit's fucking wrong and I don't also understand how a company expects me to come, wanted me to come over there. Exactly. <laughs> to boot what felt like to me, they were using me to boost their stock price. 100%. And I don't say that out of ego, but we've done well. 100%. And that they get all these podcasts saying, well, that'll boost our stock price. Then we'll go public with the stock. And then based again on their. Oh my God. I just realized something. I remember reading about this online. Podcast One have been planning to do an IPO, I think, since like February or April. Because I check a lot of like startup news thing, and I think I'm even subscribed to like a business podcasting. I got, I remember seeing a headline on my inbox about Podcast One wanting to IPO. They've been planning this for a long time. So maybe the reason why they hadn't IPO'd yet, they wanted to get everybody on board so that they could use them, their names, their celebrity to pump up the stock and pump up the interest that's why they were delaying the ipo pushing it back pushing it back <laughs> this game is so scummy this game is so scummy so they scammed them all these podcasters they scammed them out of their money then they were gonna they don't pay them then they promise to pay them if they jump on this new place but then they they want to announce them before they go, you know, so they scam them. They don't pay them. They chase. They don't get the money. Then they say, hey, we're going to this new place, but we're only going to get the money when we IPO. But then they they want to use their names to pump up the IPO. But even when they do IPO, there's no guarantee you get the money. This is some high level white collar scam shit, bro. Backs. The stock, there'll be, there'll be money there. So it was like, it felt like y'all going to try to fuck me twice, homie. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I love fear. I love fear. <laughs> that was good. No, thank you. <laughs> there will be money there. So it was like, it felt like y'all going to try to fuck me twice, homie. Well, <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you can keep that money. Um, you can't keep it. We'll see how it plays out. But if you do end up keeping it, man, you must have needed it. You must have needed it. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't make me stoked, but um, but you can't get me to shut up, man. Mm. You can't get me to shut up. Good boy. And uh, if that's the cost Good of boy. it for me to say my fucking piece. Good boy. You know how many other podcasters wanted to say this shit right now but can't say it? Mm. So... Anyway. Wow, you rarely see Theo like this, isn't it? You rarely see the real Theo, the mask, you know, the you know, none of the character, the actual real Theo, you rarely see it.
sometimes when he's like being emotional about his life and stuff and his sobriety you might see it but he's really pissed off man this shit really fucking stung this shit really fucking hurt fucking hell bro god damn um that's who i just want you to know i want you to know about colin thompson i want you to know where i've heard he's going to be working at mm. and i want you to know that he is a crook and to me it's criminal um but it, the 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 way that people are able to cheat and lie and, and manipulate the system, um, you know, he went and got Neil Sacker, who worked with Harvey Weinstein, to jump on the calls. Jesus I mean, he just, just, I don't, scum, isn't it? Fuck, it's just fucking kind of sad, man. Yeah. And yeah, but I just wanted to speak up for myself, man. Good boy, I've man. waited a year to speak up for myself. Good boy, you know, man. he he, they put us through so much bullshit. And I don't know if there's other people over there that did it too, and maybe we'll get more information. I don't know. Or this may be all you ever hear about it, you know? Um, and so I didn't really know how to, the best way to do this, but um, yeah, I wouldn't do that to somebody. I wonder if this has anything to do with him leaving King in a stink. Bit of a reach, but I wonder if there was something about this that affected his mood at King in a stink because he was kind of always down. People always thought it was to do with his depression and shit, but he didn't, towards the end, he kind of didn't seem like he wanted to be there. He had other stuff on his mind. I wonder if this had something to do with that. Obviously, Keen is thinking he maybe left because, you know, Brendan's bad for business and not being associated with Crystalia and shit. But I wonder if he left King in a sting because of all this shit that was going on at the time. And he, they, they, they did, man, they did it to, I mean, some of these people's podcasts, this is all they had, man. And these motherfuckers did that, bro. So I'm sorry about that. Um, and I'm sorry for them. And yeah, I'm just happy to have a voice for myself. And that's one thing that we built here. Exactly, Z. Right after noticing money is missing, I'd go full BGL. As much as I don't like BGL as a person, I have to admit, all of his actions are now being quite, you know, his reaction and his constant going at fucking Brendan is making a lot of sense now. Because he, he only got scammed for 15 grand of unpaid salary wages that he probably was never going to get anyway right i think brendan's using this as an excuse for the cast media stuff he was never going to pay him i think brendan was trying to punish bgl for betraying him and talking to trolls and haters and shit and putting out his business out there by not paying him money i don't think he didn't pay him because he didn't have it i think he paid him as a punishment for him going on all these shows and doing interviews and all this sort of stuff but if bgl acted like that over 15k what would you do over one mil? 1.5 mil. From a guy that looks like that Colin Leach guy, looks a bit like a dweeb, like he's got highlights in his hair and shit. He said like you could blow him over. The kind of guy that, you know, never buys his own drugs. The kind of guy that talks about hooking up with models and he doesn't do anything really. All right? That kind of like dorky, leechy, you know, wannabe finance guy. And then he's stealing your money. You know how furious I make you feel? Um, Art Otia saying May 23rd you were spot on that's when the live one deal was announced with cars so Theo sat on this all summer <gasps> wow that makes it even more scummy Otia and everybody else they were trying to use the names of some of the biggest podcasters around who've been scammed to help pump up this stock in the hope like giving them false promises that if the stock was pumped up it would give them money so some of these podcasters probably accepted that deal, which is essentially a little bit, it's not like insider trading, but that is a little bit like, it sounds a little bit illegal, no? You all purposely join this app, use your celebrity status to make the app more popular and increase its potential when it comes to, or it's only potential on IPO when it goes public. Isn't that a little bit scammy? You're intentionally doing it. Doesn't that sound like the same thing that people do with crypto coins? where they get all these celebrities to sign up to crypto coins and then they put it, they use the celebrities to advertise them to us regular people. We buy them because we're obsessed with celebrities thinking that they actually know what they're talking about, thinking that we can trust them because we like them. You like how they throw football and shit. And then we, yeah, that, that's quite a, that's a rug pull, isn't it? That sounds so similar. That's basically the same things. And Brendan's signed up to it, by the way. Brendan's a member of Podcast One. Look at that. It's all in full HD, courtesy of the Final Kids Sub. He's signed up. All his shows are on Podcast One. So he actually took the deal. He complained about it. He called up fucking um, Jason Ellis. 
he whined, he bitched and he moaned, but he still got himself signed up to Podcast One. He's the type of dude who, if he was part of SAG, he would definitely be somebody that would cross over the picket line, innit? Everybody's holding out, going on strike. Even people that, because the strike thing with the actors thing, most of the big actors are fine because they got loads of money. But the big actors are still sort of holding firm because it's going to help the littler guys if they change things, right? If they maybe have better splits, if they give a residual, it's going to help the smaller guys. But Ben is the type of person to just look after himself. He'll be, I think someone told me in the chat, he's the kind of person who's, he would be gossiping about and complaining about the manager with you in the stockroom. Then the moment they get made assistant manager, they pretend they don't know you. They start acting all brand new. They start like, you know, having their head up in the fucking, you know, up in the skies, acting all managerial and shit. That's what he basically did. He called up Jason Ellis, he complained. He called up Theo, he complained. He cried and moaned. But then he signed this shitty deal that Podcast One had. Basically betraying all his comedy friends. Yeah, exactly. He's a scab. That's what fucking Brendan is. A fucking scab. Who would have who would have known? Here that he, that he had nothing to do with. He had nothing to do with. In fact, he stole on our backs once, and I'm not letting these people do it to me two times. So for anybody that had to take that that sucker oh, uh, deal over there, yeah. uh, this vo I'm speaking on behalf uh, for all of us, man. Because um, I know that some of you guys have said to me that you wanted to say some of these same things and. Um, Uja said the pod scene is about to implode. Where does Tiger Belly and Bad Friends stand in all this? They did have a beef with a different company. Yeah, um, podcast, sorry, um, Tiger Belly, if I remember when I read it on the stream, their deal was with a company called like, what's it called? Luminary or something, or one of those names, which is again, another podcast network. If I'm, if, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was a podcast network that had obviously podcasts on it. And then they signed a deal with like, a Spotify or somebody and then they were meant to get that money that they got for the deal and you know break off a portion for each podcast but with Bobby Lee I think what happened again fucking bad luck for Bobby Lee the time that deal got announced yeah Luminary the time that deal got announced if I'm not mistaken is at the same time some random kid on TikTok um, repost that fucking Tijuana st story thing that he says on his pod where he, you know, may or may not have um, had sex with an underage fucking sex worker out there or prostitute, as people would call them more commonly. Some random kid out of nowhere at the same time that that deal got, and again, maybe it's inside a thing. Maybe we don't know because that could make a lot of sense, right? Um, you buy this company because of all the names associated to it and then you have somebody on the inside put out this, this you know, this hurtful information about those people so that they get sacked and then you don't have to pay them their share. Is that possible? It's a bit conspiratorial. Like, it's a bit crazy to think that. But could that be possible? That there could be somebody that works behind the scenes that does this for these guys so they can keep more of the money. They have to keep pay out to all these people because the timing was kind of eerie. The deal gets announced and then as soon as it gets announced, that story fucking pops up again. <laughs> and then he got cancelled. And then, and, then, and then that company fired him, Luminary, who bought that network that he was on. But he said, no, you knew who I was already. You did all your due diligence. You can't fire me without giving me the money that I'm owed. So there's some, you know, he's right in some respects. But because that Tijuana story is so wild, it's difficult to defend and say you weren't fired for gross misconduct. Because I think that's what they fired him for. They fired him for bringing a company to disrepute and gross misconduct. It's hard to argue to your boss and say it's not gross misconduct when that sort of story has been shared about you, you know, it's kind of difficult, but <sighs> Jesus. I don't mean that out of ego. I just mean that, um, I don't know. I feel, uh, you know, I don't know. Sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have said that part. I don't want to speak on behalf of those people, but, um, yeah, no, that's all good for you. I just you wouldn't have done that bro. to somebody. And uh, I'm happy to be able to speak for myself. Well done for you. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful to you guys, to the listeners, that we have this place here. Um, and that this is what we try to do. Well done, and I'm bro. sorry I've been making this about me this past five or six minutes or whatever. But um, mm, but I, this was the only public place I could do this where I feel like it would have some effect. Because to me, this guy's like the Bernie Madoff of podcasting. Jesus and, Christ. And... Uh, and that almost glorifies him in a weird way. But um, I wanted to be able to say that. Sorry, I'm just rambling. But uh, I, I wanted to be able 
to speak my piece. Good boy. Thank you. The fact that he's one of the only big ones to come out and say this is a bit worrying, isn't it? It shows you how much of pussies these all these guys are behind the scenes, isn't it? He's the first big one to come out and say something. And Theo's at, in a position where I I prob- I believe him. I believe Theo probably could go out there and get another deal and make that make up that four grand, make up that four mil that he allegedly lost, or maybe around that one point five. He could make that back again. That's why he's not like hurt and stressed. He's just more. It feels like you know when you get, you know when somebody like, I don't know, you know when someone like steals money from your wallet. It's really not about the money. It's more about the violation of them actually opening your wallet, taking it, putting your wallet back in your bag. You know what I mean? Just feel violated. So I think that's what fear feels like more so. Pick up Jobu. Guadarun.grh, but be mindful of her tone, Kunta. <laughs> Thank you, Jobu. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for hanging out, man. Thank you for hanging <laughs> Kunta Zinga. Uh, Kunta Zinga. So anyway, let's continue. I don't want to get back into that. I'm going to fucking cry again. Um... But yeah, the fact that Fia spoke up about it, like it says a lot about him, man. So big up, big up, big up, um, <laughs> big up, uh, big up, fucking Fia. Zach saying, "Az, you gotta take the podcast one deal." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm only taking that deal if he fucking sends me the money in cash in a fucking suitcase. And even then, I'll just renege on it and not do it. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna? What's he gonna? Is he gonna force me to do it? I'd like to see him try. <laughs> I mean, that's as simple as that. Just get the money in cash, promise loads of deliverables, don't deliver on them. And then when he starts complaining, he starts saying, yeah, this is what it feels like to get scammed, isn't it? Now you know how Fia feels. <laughs> simple. <laughs> you just reverse it. <laughs> um, yeah. Fuck, bro. Fuck. I can't imagine how these guys feel. But it might explain a lot, you know. And again, I'm reading too much into it, but this might explain a lot. As Uche said, like, this person's about to implode. But have some of you stopped listening to a few pods? I know I have. I watch probably way more YouTube now than I do pod. I'm, I'm watching. I'm always on fucking live streams. I watch fucking Friday Night Tights, Nerd Rotic. I'm watching Tom Dark live streams, Academics. I'm watching HS, I'm watching HS Tiki Toki on Kick. I'm watching Fuzzy Ones around. I'm doing loads of. I'm doing loads of video content. But I'm not really listening to podcasts as much because they kind of have become a little bit exactly unbearable, hard to listen to. Hear this out. Theory. I wonder if all this money owed to these guys has been something that's been weighing on all their brains, has been something that's been sitting on their fucking shoulders, something that's been causing them stress, keeping them up at night. And that's why we haven't been getting good podcasts. That's why these podcasts have been kind of going down in quality and haven't been as entertaining. Maybe this has in part been the reason they've all kind of fallen off because i know for me if my if i'm owed money i'm not going to do good work i'm just going to not i'm not going to turn up or i'm just going to go through the motions and a lot of these podcasts feel like they go through the motions so maybe part of the reason why these pods are kind of floundering and we've all kind of taken a break from them we've all decided to do different things or maybe we just take a break completely maybe it's because of this whole thing in the background because you know one thing about comedians the one thing they care about the most you know apart from ticket sales is money they love money so if the money that they feel like they're owed isn't you know in their accounts i can see why that would you know drastically hamper the quality of the shows they put on it's a bit of a stretch but i don't know um Uta saying if you want a free podcast model sign all the best um hot chicks that live in vans and cars and you'll get a mad ad revenue from car makers outdoors and appliances yeah true is that black girl still around do you remember that black girl on youtube that went viral she was living out of her car and she just like got i don't know half a million fucking subs in a few days and i think people were thinking she was like an industry plant or something and people found out she wasn't she just hit the algo and then i think i remember reading up on it and what as otio says that whole like um what do they call it that thing camp life in it i think it's called is it camp life or whatever whatever that scene is it's really it does really well on youtube the cpm or whatever that stuff is really high because as um otio says it kind of hits loads of different markets like you know it hits those different age groups you've got the car thing you've got the appliance thing you've got the hot girl thing so yeah 
um Koyla saying i can't recall a single one if i've listened to it all the way through or even checked out uh, past the thumbnail wow yeah i think there's a lot of like podcast fatigue man it's out there it does exist there's a lot of fucking podcast fatigue um because i as much as i love rogan i can't remember the last rogan i listened to in four i'm still listening to um save our parks in like little increments but i just get bored or get distracted and i'm just on youtube again <laughs> i've stopped or, or on twitter do you know what i mean checking my feed um why mh is unbearable and it used to be oh man coiler don't mention that please man your mum's house has been probably your mum's house might be up there with history hyenas for me in terms of disappointments for podcasts history hyenas when that ended i it hurt my soul because i thought that show was so good they still was such a good combo Yanis and what's his fucking name? <sighs> Chris Stefano, like it was actually really fucking good. And then they, you know, one person got what did, what's that what's that show that Chris got to end history hyenas? It was some shitty like back but what you call it? Uh back garden bar making show. It was like a bar rescue, but they were making people's they were making like bars out in like sheds and shit. It was like a competition. And you got a deal to like present, be the presenter of that show. And again, comedians love money. So I'm assuming they weren't making a lot of money on History Hyenas, like outright. So he probably got offered a good signing on bonus and a salary. And he, he completely head got turned and they cancelled or they stopped doing History Hyenas. And, you know, and they both haven't recovered, I don't think, personally. I don't know if you guys agree, but I think those two, Yanis Pappas and Chris Stefano, were a much better trio than they are on their own. As much as Yanis Papas' show is good, he's got some like new show type of thing he does. He's really funny. Also, he's good when he goes on Tim Dillon's pod. Those two guys were really magic when they were together. On their own, you know, that really hurt my heart. But the other one that hurt my heart was fucking why, your mum's house. When your mum's house went down in quality and started getting shit, honestly, your mum's house, like Joe Budden, I used to listen to that stuff when I was like, used to work retail and stuff in warehouses. I'd be having that on my headphones and I'd be crying. And your mum's house, think about it, right? They play a lot of clips. So a lot of the stuff you have to kind of see to make it a lot, to, to be, to kind of get a sense of what's going on. But that show was so descriptive. You could actually visualize the person that they were talking about, even if you wasn't watching the fucking clip, just watching, just listen to it via audio. So it wouldn't surprise me if they told me early episodes of your mum's house were probably getting way more audio downloads than even video views because it was you could still get across the humor via audio only that shit was special bro and then something happened maybe tom started making more money maybe christina p started getting too much botox something changed and that show went so shit it's so crap now it's so sad man your mom's house was so fucking good it had such like honestly oh i used to like i was i'll be laughing crying in the warehouse stacking shelves like tears running down my eyes like listening to that stuff honestly man <sighs> but it's with all things in it there's always a time in it it's time and it kind of goes i don't think you can but we had a good time and we had a good run we listened to some good comedy podcasts we had a good time we found a little community on people on reddits and streams and shit that's a good thing don't get me wrong but i do wish we could go back to those good days right early early tiger belly early your mum's house um even early rogan early church of what's happening right now but now they're all shit now they're all shit man exactly golden time of podcasting man it's legitimately gone it's never coming back <sighs> what can you do what can you do